Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young, and we are inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium because it is game week, and we just heard from Chris Kleiman, the head coach of the Wildcats, Avery Johnson, and numerous other players in preparation of kickoff with UT Martin uh, this coming weekend. What was your number one takeaway from what you heard in there today, whether it's something that Chris Kleiman said or it was Carver Willis explaining the numerous nicknames that he has for different players on this roster? What what stood out most to you? Just confidence probably, uh, a little bit of a chip on her sh- shoulder kind of feel. No one act- they actually went out of their way to say they didn't have a chip on your shoulder, but it sound- kind of seemed like some did. Like Avery Johnson said, we're deeper than what everyone thinks. I don't, I don't know who everyone is yet, but uh, just those types of things, just hidden messages, those underlying meanings kind of stood out to me. A, a lot of depth. You just continue to hear a lot of depth. Uh, Chris Kleiman, I asked him, you know, you come out of camp, where do you think you're best at on each side of the ball? Defensively, it's our veteran leadership and our depth. Offensively, skill position, which now might be music to everyone's ears because in the past it's like Kent State has – usually maybe one running back in a wide receiver room sometimes it's left a little bit to be desired after a year aside from maybe one year or two so uh they are feeling very good about their wide receiver room i think that's one of my takeaways as well I, for me it was that joe jackson has two phones I mean, that was the number one thing you know you mentioned avery johnson who are these people that you're talking about not you know not being as deep as what they say he also brought that up when talking about his running back dj giddens basically saying like yeah i mean i think he gets overlooked because he maybe isn't as he probably does boisterous as some and and avery called him you know maybe the best running back in the country but I, i would agree with you it felt like everybody came in there with a lot of confidence and they feel good about their roster in it it wasn't manufactured. It was, It didn't come across as fake, which you can certainly get in situations like this. In terms of what Chris Kleiman had to say, it was a big point. This is the start of his sixth season at K-State. Uh, what did you take away from some of his words today? More confidence as well. Uh, he really likes a lot of the pieces he has. Uh, the, but if I were to maybe summarize it in a very quick way, he thinks – there's probably a lot of keys to the season, a lot of keys to success for Kansas State, but I think two of them are they have to be explosive and they got to stop the other team from being explosive, which makes sense. That's where Kansas State sucked last year, quite frankly, both ways. And then turnover margin. we got to get a lot of takeaways. we got to take care of the ball. So I think if they want, if they were to pin, you know, two ga- categories that would basically determine or dictate the direction of the season and how successful that they can be, they would say explosiveness offensively and keeping other teams from being explosive and turnover margin um, in terms of takeaways versus giveaways. So it, and, and I don't think it'll be a problem, but it's something to keep in mind when there's a lot of new pieces on the offense that haven't necessarily contributed, contributed at a high level yet. One other thing that we got today was the first depth chart of the season came out. Probably not a ton of surprises on there. Uh, maybe the most notable on offense was that the offensive line, it was an or for one of the guard spots between Taylor Poitier and Andrew Gang. But other than that, everything about as you would expect. Do you have any surprising takeaways from the depth chart release? Surprising, no. But I thought it was interesting because I, I know people uh, roll their eyes at some of this stuff, but you had two tight ends two running backs, three wide receivers, in effect more than 11 players on that depth chart. So everyone's like rolls their eyes, well, you can't play 11. But I thought it was maybe a peek behind the curtain at that we're going to see a variety of formations. that They can go to two tight end. They can go three tight end formation. They can play Dylan Edwards and DJ Giddens at the same time. So, yes, they're not going to play 11 guys, but it was a peek behind the curtain that I think they're going to be very diverse and use a lot of variety of formations offensively. So that matters to me. You mentioned the right guard spot. Again, not a surprise, but I think it's probably a reflection that Andrew Line Gang is really making that close. Yeah, and, and that's a guy that we've heard about now for the last two years. There's talent there. It's coming, and we may get to see it uh, sooner rather than later when it comes to K-State. One other thing, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, D.Y., but the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. You can join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. K-State had a pair of representatives over there in Dublin this past week 
weekend for the Week Zero game. So we got to see uh, some, you know, tired Ryan Lackey and, and Kenny Lanou and we, action. And we also know what pubs to hit now. Apparently. Yeah, the the lowdown is there, and uh, <laughs> it'll be fascinating to see what it looks like for K State. Chris Kleiman talked about he got to see the fourth quarter of the game between Florida State and Georgia Tech. And it sounds like he didn't really watch the game. He was looking at, like, the corners of the screen and trying to figure out how's the sunlight hitting, what are the sight lines, Where's everything. the locker room? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, everything. Typical coach. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't care about Florida State or Georgia Tech. They're not on my schedule. Uh, but what about this stadium is going to be something I need to know ahead of time. Yeah, with everything else that we heard today, because, honestly, it was pretty ho-hum. And I think that's another one of those things that, that signals just how confident this team is right now is that – it doesn't feel like anybody's having to go in there and make affirmative statements about certain guys and kind of go to bat for why they're confident in them or whatever. Everybody just seems totally calm and comfortable with how they're set up. And this carries over from back in July when we were at Big 12 Media Day. It was the same type of vibe. Is there anything that you take away from what you heard today from players or coaches that gives you any concern about K-State? going into the start of the season it's hard to uh, like I, I would probably be stretching right if I did because uh, it, it, no one's played a game yet so there's no adversity everybody's great nobody sucks uh, that type of thing so it'll be interesting maybe just the operation itself uh, not that the, today made me worried about it it didn't but like it's going to be different and I think at times in some of the week zero games you saw some some wonkiness at times because there is the element communication thing there was the to be honest watching that four state Georgia Tech game it's like Mike Norvell I don't had no idea how to navigate that two minute what they're calling it a two minute timeout not necessarily yeah. a two minute warning because the timeout usage is a little bit different with yep. that in play I thought he screwed that up a little bit so it's not really anything that was said today or not said it's, it's the stuff that maybe you can't control or confirm one way or another on Monday that we'll just have to find out Saturday just like the Kansas State players and coaches. Yeah. One other thing that I think people were probably interested in knowing is who's going to return kicks and all that. Sounds like a lot of different guys are going to get an opportunity on Saturday. Uh, the only problem is you think about past years, the last two years, in fact, K-State has only had to return one kickoff in their season openers, and that was to start a half because they didn't give up any points. Uh, they do hope to return some punts, but everybody kind of got a shout-out that we observed at practices, getting their looks and opportunities there. It seems like they're all going to get that opportunity this weekend as well. Dylan Edwards, seemingly the most consistent name thrown out there, but Sterling Lockett, Keegan Johnson, Jace Brown also will get their opportunities there. But if you want more on the Cats, you can head over to the KSO YouTube page because there we'll have all of the media availability from this Monday with K-State getting ready for UT Martin and then print plenty of breakdown and reaction over on On3 from Drew, from DY, from everything else going on uh, as we now sit here, what, five days away from kickoff? And KStateOnline.com for a limited time. I'm thinking it'll be about 48 hours, maybe the end of Tuesday. We'll see if it goes into Wednesday. Uh, 50% off an annual membership at K-State Online with the promo code KICKOFF24. That is a steal of a deal. That's like K-State going into the transfer portal and getting Easton Kilty to be their left tackle for this free. season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't yeah. think he's for, for free. But <laughs> well, but maybe they got him half off, you know, FCS discount. I don't know uh, how that gets figured out. But that'll do it for us here today in Bill Snyder Family Stadium. The next time we're doing one of these videos like this, uh, hopefully it says K-State 49, UT Martin 0 on the scoreboard. Only 49? Well, I mean, they only scored, what, 34 against South Dakota, and that was a Big 12 championship team. So, yeah, I'm, I'm being reasonable. 49 points uh, for the Cats on Saturday. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.